Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and it is time once more for some weekly painting progress. So in front of us here we have both Lady Justice and the Judge, who are back for more action, or starting action, I guess, for the Judge, in Malifaux's 3rd edition. So these are the 3rd edition versions of Lady J and the Judge. I don't know where I put my old Lady J or Judge. They were one of the first crews I think I ever built and painted for Malifaux. Not that I've ever actually played it to any official capacity, but we have had the figures in quite a few other games besides their game of origin. I actually really like the new Lady Justice sculpt. It's kind of flat, kind of static. Wasn't a million parts and a pain in the rear to put together like the original, but I don't know, it works for me. And she's definitely just going to end up in Shadows of Brimstone, so it is what it is. Let's see what else we have. So, something different. I busted out some of my Paymaster Games Pacific Northwestern Armored Warriors. So, these guys are pretty cool. They're based on, oh, I don't know which tribe now. I totally forgot, and I can at least put it down in the comments section. But they had this really intricate designed armor with like all kinds of decorations and so I tried doing that originally and it just did not look good so I just went with very basic blue and white patterns and attempted to put animal designs on their capes but it just didn't turn out as good as I wanted sadly so there actually are five guys in the unit but I sort of misplaced one of them so I found him naturally after I'd finished painting these guys up and I'm thinking I'm just going to do him really intricately. I'm going to just give it a try and go hog wild. I have a bunch of photos of various museum pieces already saved on my computer. And we're going to try to do their armor justice. I know it ended up with a lot of blue and white. And I should have put a little bit of reds in there as well. But I figure with the red armor, it was already too much as it is. I didn't know what colors to use for their tools. I figured obsidian or stone of some sort was probably most likely what was used. I couldn't find a lot of info on that online. If you guys have any suggestions on where I should be looking, by all means, please let me know. I always am interested in learning a little bit more about more of the historical aspects of our hobby. After all, I am probably going to go ahead and put some green flocking around there at some point or another. I just don't know where I put that. And this is supposed to be the boss man of the unit with his fancy totem wand sign of office. And I had no idea how to paint it, so I just got kind of a turquoise color. So there they are. And I have a bunch of the newer hero models that Paymaster made as well. And I'm thinking they're probably going to be up while I am on vacation once the kids are out of school. Let's see. Wouldn't be a week going by without High Lord Tamburlaine painting yet more Kingdom Death. So a very plain and boring... Gorm armor from the Giga Lion set. It just sadly looking at it now, all the colors seem to have blended together. I used a lot of grays and blacks and variations thereof while I was painting him, but it all kind of seems to have bled together, at least on camera. So I might want to go back and fix that up. And I probably also should do something with that lantern because I didn't. I don't think I've ever painted any Gorm armor yet, so this was a first for me. At least I kind of have an idea now. I mean, I know what it looks like, and I've seen the illustrations and stuff and there's a few photos online but there's not a whole lot to go with he's just a big dude i mean malifaux figures tend to be big but he even towers over them and he absolutely dwarfs these poor paymaster guys poor warriors all right what else do we got so i did a video recently on some of those artisan guild 3d printed minis and lo and behold and i think it was even last week might have been last week. I already got him painted. Well, at least everybody except the ogre. I couldn't make up my mind how to paint the ogre. So he's still a work in progress, but I'm sure he'll be done soon. And I gotta say, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how these dudes turned out for just a quick paint job. They're, they're pretty solid models. I mean, I was gonna put Tokage or something about reptiles on his Sashimono or whatever they're called, but... I did not get around to it. I didn't know what color to do his feathers either. That's a big hang-up for me, is whenever I'm painting lizard men, like all the Lost Empire, Quetzalcoatl guys, I have no idea what I want to do with their headdresses. 
So again, any suggestions, I will happily take them. Let me know what you guys think I should do, especially like some of those big Quetzalcoatl guys from Lost Empire. I got no idea what I want to do with the headdresses, so otherwise we're all going to get a boring generic green one like that. Then we got that barbarian hero character done. I really like her. I think, you know, she's a nice looking model. It was a single piece. No gluing necessary. Except maybe to the base. I think I did glue her to the base. But yeah, she she came out really nice. I'm quite pleased with my results on her. A lot of these guys, I just screwed around with the contrast paint since I have them. I'm not a super huge fan, but I figure at this point, I might as well put them to work. And along with them, I got the big lizard man boss finished as well. He had a horrible time going together, as you can see. I could not fill in those gaps as nicely as I would have liked. But we he's just dancing. There's a couple of spots on him that just I didn't hit as much paint-wise as I should have. And he's just huge. He really is big. He absolutely just dwarfs over everybody. And I guess it is one of the cool things about those 3D prints is you can go and tinker with them and get them in a smaller size or whatever works for you but I mean that's, that's just like so to go with him we have finally this week the creature caster orc forge lord or at least I think that's what he was called so despite my sloppy speed lines on him I'm pretty satisfied with the results I might go back and fix up the smoke but I really like this model there's a couple of spots, actually, I really think I do need to go back and fix up. He just speaks to me, and I don't know why. I don't really care for orcs, but I really enjoyed this model. It really rang to me, and I'm glad I got it finished. So I'm, I'm pretty good in terms of my overall ratio now for painting giant creature caster models versus how many I have sitting unfinished. As of this video, I think off the top of my head, I have the King of Ruin, or not the King of Ruin, the King of War is about 40% mm, finished. The Queen of War is still sitting there, if that is a queen, or the Lady of Strife or something like that. I've got her primed, and the King and Queen of Ruin are waiting to get primed. And hopefully, maybe I can get at least one more of them done before the end of the year. So, overall, a nice little haul of models finished this week. And like I'm always saying, if I can manage to squeeze this stuff in, despite all of the craziness and zaniness that life tends to throw at us, what's your guys' excuse? Let's get those paintbrushes going, even if it turns out marginal at best, at least it's painted, right? With that said, this is High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, and thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here next week, too. Hopefully. Bye-bye.